Hey YouTube, my name's Chris. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be overclocking an Intel CPU. I'm going to be covering extensively, uh, not too advanced, but basic enough so you guys have a decent enough understanding on overclocking the CPU um, on an Intel system. Now, I'm not covering AMD here. I'm sorry, guys. I've got some links here uh, to put you guys in the right direction. Zen 3 overclocks quite well with um, a PBO 2.0, and you also have the, the curve optimizer, uh, the voltage curve thingy. Um, but Zen 2 and under weren't so good. You're better off just using having precision boost overdrive on and calling it a day. Now, why would you want to overclock your CPU? It's kind of a big deal. Um, a lot of people get scared, but um, let me put you in the right direction. You really want to do this. It's free effort. FPS guys just have a bit of a look here so this is um, just RAM speeds which RAM speeds make a big difference this is the Tomb Raider benchmark and this is a CPU overclock we gain an extra 7 FPS in this heavy benchmark by doing that same thing scales really well I believe we get an almost an extra 60 plus FPS in CSGO Rainbow Six Siege we're getting almost another 40 FPS Warzone we're getting an extra uh, almost 15 FPS so overclocking your CPU is definitely worth it if you know what you're doing and if you're comfortable I'm going to lead you in the right direction now a lot of you guys may have been um, sent to this video or this um, short series with the free the optimization pack from my future latency game video guides congratulations thank you for being here this is one of the, all this stuff is one of the really most important uh, stuff more more so than um, you can only do so much with optimizing your game um, really this is a nitty-gritty of it now if you have missed uh, the GPU overclocking guide as part of this series if you have mis missed the optimization pack setting up your windows and BIOS and peripherals and everything correctly please go back and and and, and start from the beginning and ideally if, if you could do at least a factory set or refresh install before you follow this uh, i've included it as a playlist on youtube go follow it it's really important these are the steps after the fact of doing this so i'm going to assume most of you have done that and you have got this optimization pack on your c drive and you have some files ready to go here so we can cover this extensive cpu overclock we're going to be overclocking a 10900 K here today. Um, we have the Patriot 4400 megahertz, which is just we're just going to be running with XMP. Um, and then the next video, I'm going to be covering a uh, more extensive memory overclocking, a dedicated memory overclocking video. So we're going to start with the CPU first. Now, when it comes to overclocking Intel, you need to be concerned about AVX. Now, some games do little, use a little bit of AVX instruction, but not so much. Usually games don't. So keeping that in mind, AVX makes the CPU run almost 30 degrees hotter in some cases and is really generally for rendering and workstation uh, sort of programs. And most of the time you can have a little bit of a high overclock that might not necessarily be AVX stable, but totally fine for the game. Now, every overclock is different and every overclocker has a different idea of completely stable. Some people will want fully AVX stable even just for games and some people are happy to push it a little bit further. So that's just something to keep in mind. So you might want to have two prior files in BIOS, one safe without the CPU overclocks or a basic CPU overclock on one where it's pushed a little bit further. And if you do get a blue screen, like a rendering a video or something you might want to back it back down to the other profile like i said everyone has a bit of a different um idea on uh you know what to stress it for uh do we make sure it's fully avx stable and, and some people like to stress it for days on end some people like to stress it just overnight some people like to just run a stress test for an hour or so if it's fine they'll play a game and if they're not getting any blue screens or crashes in any games and temps are fine they'll call it a day so it really just letting you guys know everyone has a different idea about doing this but i'm going to lead you guys in the right direction so you've got a bit of a basic knowledge and understanding where you can do this for yourself if any of this interests you and you would be interested in me doing this for you i do offer a service over on twitter where i'll do a fresh install for you set up windows correctly uh cpu overclocks memory overclocks graphics card overclocks i also do dual pc setups and um dual streaming pcs stuff like that so if you don't want to do anything yourself and you if you're interested in me doing it for you go check me out on twitter there's a scheduling page there like I said, I'll assume that you've uh, followed all these optimizations. So especially for CPU overclocking, we've got the power plan on, we've got timer resolution on, we've done um, the basic BIOS settings, uh, we've disabled speed step, speed shift, uh, C states, set an AVX to zero, all of that. Got your water pump in full speed, whether it be in BIOS or with the software, put that in fixed mode or full speed if you need software for your cooler. That's a really important step that I don't want to skip here. And we do have XMP on. We're just going to be working with XMP and starting with a CPU overclock because that's what this video is dedicated for. We're going to be using a tool called Hardware Info to just monitor the temperatures. So we're going to run this. You can just run the census tab only. Okay, and, and I'll wait for this to open and drag it across. So right now, there's no overclocks on. Well, technically there is because XMP is on, but 
but it's just just automatic boosting to 4.9, um, which is uh, totally normal for a 10900K. Um, the ring clock is 4.3. Um, these are our idle temperatures here that we keep an eye on. The thing we're going to be keeping an eye out is for the, the critical temperature and the, the power limits, the thermal throttling here. When we run our stress test as well as we'll be scrolling down and we're going to be keeping an eye on the vehicle voltage here too. Uh, that's sort of a big deal. And just on a side note, I did mention this in the um, the basic video, but also making sure these two aren't overvolted with our current RAM kit. There's plenty of other stress test programs out there. For the purposes of this video, we're going to be using OCCT. Um, so we open this and we'll just get a bit of a rough idea of what our temperatures are. So um, I'm going to say this again. Please make sure that your water pump is in full speed if you're using an AIO. If you're using an air cooler, don't expect to be able to push the overclocks as far or the voltage as far. It is what it is. There are lots of YouTube videos out there that'll be like air cool is just as good as water cooler. But in reality, when you do things like having no AVX offset and the CPU not down clocking at all and you're really pushing an Intel system to the complete limits with max voltage. Uh, yeah, sort of a really good AAO will beat quite extensively even a top of the line knock to an um, air cooler. Just letting you guys know. So if you do have an air cooler, you might want to look at upgrading to a relatively decent cooler. I uh, personally would recommend EK series. Uh, they're pretty good as far as the... Um, the 360 AIO or the Arctic Liquid Freezer, that's what I'm using. I'm using an Arctic Liquid Freezer for 360 with push-pull fan configuration. Just letting you guys know. But anyway, we're going to be using OCCT. So we're going to just open this, click CPU. And what we're going to do is use large, extreme, variable, and threads just at auto. And go ahead and put, press play. So ideally, when we're stress testing this, if you can get through this uh, within an hour and the temperatures aren't hitting thermal throttling limits, so obviously, ideally, we want to keep this like as soon as you hit 90 degrees ish it's going to just start like throttling or stuttering in games um we obviously want to keep the temperatures quite well so uh these temps here are almost around almost hit up to 70 it's bumped back down this is a pretty reasonable but what you would want to do is um this is actually going for 30 minutes but you could change that to an hour but if you guys could at least run this for an hour and you have no issues in games and temperatures are looking good all around that should be fine so that's what we're going to be using for stress testing now there are other lots of other um uh you know programs that you can use just show you guys one here um this is a great uh, website by king Farris. he uh, covers uh quite a little bit of stuff and different ram speeds i've mentioned this in the other video dual rank single rank stuff like that but as far as overclocking he's got a little bit of an idea on um some different um you know benchmarks you can use um so as an example so say you only wanted to use cinebench r15 so yeah like you could loop this indefinitely and it would be stable and pass and you'd probably be fine for games like csgo and valorant and overwatch which aren't too too cpu heavy but then you go play something like warzone or battlefield and you'll probably get some blue screens so that's just something to keep in mind um i just recommend occt generally i used to use prime 95 it's totally personal preference but here's some tools that you can use if you want some links to some other cool tutorials as well with the um, older cpus uh, you don't have to watch this video by all means please go do your research and check a couple of other things out absolutely so going on to cpu overclocking i have a bit of a basic there are links in here that you guys would have grabbed from my optimization pack now this is straight from intel they're going to tell you to use intel xtu don't use intel xtu just use your BIOS. You don't need software like this at all, doing it on a software like level. You wanna permanently set this in BIOS and we're gonna be working with BIOS today, but this is a decent enough read for you guys to understand what you wanna do. But basically what we all we do is we basically set our multipliers on the CPU to push the speed faster. And in doing that, we'll probably need more voltage with that. Another thing we have to worry about is the load line calibration as well. So. What the voltage is doing and the load versus idle so say you have a certain load line calibration if it's a straight line say you put 1.35 volts you get 1.35 volts and when it's under load it's 1.35 volts if you change your load line calibration to v droop then it can be 1.35 under load and it might bump all the way down to 1.32 just depends on what you set it at we'll be covering that a little bit here i like to start working with a complete straight line load line calibration and then after i found sort of the limits of the cpu then look at maybe making a little bit of a v drip if it's going to be set stable it just totally depends on silicon lottery and that's another thing we're going to be playing with today guys i could buy two 10900 ks or just two cpus straight off the factory line one is going to overclock better than the other and that's just how it is due to silicon uh, 
limitations. That's just how it is. Every silicon chip is completely different. Anyway, a bit of a good read for you guys to just have a bit of a look. Now, as far as the Zen 3 overclocking guide, generally, if you have a precision boost overdrive on and you've got XMP on, decent enough RAM timings and speeds, you're doing all right, but you can go a little bit further with uh, Zen 3. Um, you can use the curve optimizer. And also you can do use the precision boost overclock as well. There's a couple other things you can do. Generally locking cores on AMD isn't recommended like Intel. But this is definitely a good read to check out. There are lots of other guides out there. I wish there were more as far as the Zen 3, but there's not too many out there. So just go do your research and check it out if you want to get into overclocking your AMD system. But once again, make sure temps are okay and stability is okay because this is a big deal. Now, if you think you have an okay cooler, but you don't feel like it's holding up during this video, Maybe you need to clean out the dust, make sure that the fans are working, make sure the water pump's working. You might need to repaste the CPU, maybe the paste has gone bad. Or maybe you're just one of the unlucky ones where the cooler water pump is dying. Or you just have one of the new Corsair coolers. And some of the new Corsair coolers are horrible. I've seen some of the 360 ones that just don't even do a good job. The water pump is just horrible. So um, realistically, you, you, I just really recommend something like an Arctic liquid freezer or an, an EEK. Uh, they generally have pretty good water pumps. Um, there's a YouTuber called Gamers Nexus. He reviews um, all-in-one AIOs and um, he has some really good suggestions. So I recommend checking me out, trying to get the best of the best, ideally, if you can. Um, so I've even seen um, the brand new Asus 360 cooler, like top of the line, really fancy with them with all the RGBs. It did a horrible job of cooling a 11900K. Absolutely horrible job. It was disgusting. Um, and eh, the cooler was fitted on properly. So sometimes, you know, the water pumps in some of these AIO systems aren't the greatest. And that's just something to keep in mind. Anyway, moving on. We can also use uh, Cinebench for benchmarking, which is what we're, gonna, we're going to do. So I'll get you to go ahead and open this and download um, Cinebench uh, because we can use that to do a bit of a benchmark before and after uh, to see if uh, the, we've actually got an improvement. Um, but although I don't need to specifically do this because if it's the CPU, uh, you know, if we've overclocked the CPU and the ring clock um, and it's higher, uh, we're going to get more frames. That's just how it works, as long as it's stable. So, but we can use Cinebench to make sure that our results are getting better because if we run Cinebench and our results are slightly worse, maybe there's something wrong or it's unstable or temps are getting too high. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now I need to mention this, Google is your friend. So go have a look at people that have similar CPUs to you and what they've been able to overclock them to and just have a bit of a look at that. Now, the only thing you need to be concerned about if someone says, hey, I've got 1.4 volts on my CPU um, at this overclock, you need to be concerned whether if they included is that with an AVX offset and what's actually the load voltage. Is the load voltage, uh, you know, a, V dripping or is it going up over, over vo vaulting? So under load, is it doing 1.4? Is it doing 1.45? Or is it jumping all the way down? Is there an AVX offset where the CPU is just down clocking itself? So but that's something to keep in mind. Now, I'll save you guys a little bit of time to uh, the uh, 10 series, so uh, 10, uh, 600, 10, um, 700, 10, 900, 900Ks. Yeah, so those CPUs are max 1.45 volts. Um, absolute like max, max. I wouldn't go over for daily stable, honestly. Even still, you're really pushing it at that. That's kind of when I'd start to feel uncomfortable. Um, as far as, uh, you need a really good cooler to do that too. As far as the, uh, the 11 series, like the new Intel series, same thing sort of goes around that. But then the uh, 9700K, 9900Ks and all the CPUs under, max I would do is 1.35 volts. And you want a really good cooler to be able to pull this off. Right, so that's just something to keep in mind. So anyway, what we can do now is we'll go back and we'll have a look at what we're currently at with this. All right, and we'll see what roughly the load line calibration is. So we've got four nine on all cores and four three on the ring. We want to overclock both of these. All right, now by doing a little bit of Google research, I've obviously obviously worked with this chip plenty of times before. I know how this chip behaves. 5.2 is kind of the max and 4.8 is the max on the ring. So I know where I'm at, but I'm going to work with you guys to show you guys how I would go through and do this. I'm going to put it under load here, but before I do, I just want to check the idle temps. Idle, idle temps are good. It's going to the V call. So it's 1.27 under uh, idle and then under load. We'll just wait for it to under load to get under load and we'll see what it sort of V droops to. And as, I, as you can see, it's, it's doing the completely opposite. So it was like 1.2 and then under load, it's going up to 1.9. So that's a bit of an, uh, like an over 
um, you know, over voltage type of thing, which is fine. Like it depends what load line calibration you want. Uh, most of the time I would go for, like I said, straight line, and then I would go for a V-droop if you can um, undervolt the CPU a little bit more. That's what I would go for. Um, as if you can't be bothered, just go straight line and call it a day. But if you want to get a little bit of extra out of it, you could do a bit of a V-droop. So say for an example, like this chip, I know this chip and uh, for, for 5.2 on all cores and 4.8 on the ring, it needs 1.4 volts complete um, straight line. Um, whereas like I could get away with on another motherboard that I had, I could get away with a bit of a V droop. So it was 1.4 volts idle and then under load, it could be drooped down to 1.37 and that was completely stable. But on this board, I kind of need that. That's kind of at like the limits that I have, but just letting you guys know. And, um, yeah, sometimes you can overclock it a little bit further with more voltage, but then a massive V droop. So that's just something also to keep in mind for you guys. Now, another thing I should probably mention is like hyper threading, which I never recommend disabling at all, or SMT if you're on AMD systems. Basically, you disable the um, the threads of the CPU, so you'd only get ten. I've got ten here, ten cores, um, and you know, <clears throat> and an extra ten threads. Um, they're, they're basically a virtual core of each core. Um, you can disable that and get a little bit more. So I could actually do 5.3 gigahertz stable if I disable hyperthreading, but then I don't have hyperthreading on a lot of games are using hyperthreading now and you can get some hitch ups or stuttering in game or not as high 1% or 0 0.1 uh, FPS is like FPS, which is FPS that you feel. So I recommend just leaving that on now. But if you're really, really having a hard time overclocking a uh, top of the line chip with lots of cores and lots of threads, if you disable hyperthreading, it'll run 10 degrees lower in uh, temperature and also you potentially can push the CPU a little bit further. But I generally wouldn't really recommend that at all because as far as my latency tests have gone, it's always better to leave hyperthreading on because it frees up more system resources and, and you've got more space and there's less latency interrupts. So I definitely recommend leaving hyperthreading on, but I thought I'd just mention that here because disabling hyperthreading, CPU does run cooler and you can get... Um, a little bit more out of the CPU, but back to back, I have tested this, for example. So I could, if I disable hyperthreading, I could do 5.3 on all cores and I can do 5 on the ring clock, benchmarking it in some heavy CPU games like COD and Battlefield. Um, and even in CSGO, honestly, um, there weren't as many frames as um, leaving hyperthreading on and just going 5.2 and 4.8 on the ring. So um, just to let you guys know that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's worth mentioning, obviously, some older titles that don't use hyperthreading at all. It might be a benefit. Uh, there are some people out there on the internet that say disabling hyperthreading increases FPS. That might be true for only a couple of titles, but at that point, it's not worth turning off because all newer games now and all modern games and all games that are coming out in the future, especially most games are going to be DirectX 12 now, hyperthreading, you're basically handicapping your CPU by turning that off. So what we'll do is we'll go straight to BIOS. You can either follow this tutorial here to get straight to BIOS if you want, or you can restart the PC and spam the delete button. In this case, I'm going to restart the PC and spam the delete button. And what we're going to do is we're going to go straight into OC. And there's a couple of things that I mentioned that hopefully you guys haven't skipped from the other video. We want to set an AVX offset to zero. We want to make sure that we have C state disabled, EIST disabled, turbo boost enabled. Um, and also speed shift technology or speed step if you have an AMD board um, disabled. Make sure we obviously have XMP on for doing this. So we've got XMP on. Now this board wanted to overvolt my memory controller. I covered that in the other video and I'm going to cover talking about that more in the memory overclocking video. So I just had to manually tune these a little bit because it was overvolting one of these to 1.4 volts. It was too high. But just so you guys know what we're working with. So I mean what we'll do now is We'll um, see what we can push this thing to. So, so I'm starting fresh now. Um, the uh, what I found interesting, guys, and I'll, I'll be totally honest with you. The uh, there's an example: 10900K, 11900K. They'll advertise a certain boost. So they'll advertise 5.3. To actually do 5.3 completely stable, no matter what kind of cooler you have, you have to be really, really lucky to do that. Whereas on all the older CPUs, 9700K, 9900K, they would advertise 5. Pretty much 99.5% of people could just do that. No problem if you had good cooling. You'd be able to do 5 gigahertz easy, sometimes a little bit more. Same with the 8700Ks. You could They, they advertise 4.7. People could do 5 gigahertz. And then under 7700, people could actually do much higher than the advertised boost speed 
now with the newer chips they're kind of advertising hey it's kind of boosts up to this but you, a lot of people can't even get up to that so just letting you know so what we'll do so let's just let's go hard off the bat so we'll we'll start with our advertised boost which is going to be five three okay now every board's going to a little bit look a little bit different but don't be afraid it's all generally doing the same thing i know access boards look a little bit different if you get a little bit confu confused i do have an older video um as a bias of a guide on an asus board so that might be worth checking out as well i'm um, going to change fixed mode to over dyna uh, sorry if it's in dynamic mode, put it into fixed mode, although you won't have to do this on Asus boards or other boards, so that's fine. Our AVX is set to zero, so it's not down, gonna down clock at all, which is what we want. Go into advanced CPU configuration. I'm keeping hyperthreading on for doing this test, just making sure that C states is uh, disabled. Now, now that we've set a manual clock, you'll see on this board, turbo boost and EIST is grayed out. That's totally normal because we've set a normal boost. Another thing I'd recommend doing is just maxing out power limit completely. So just spam nine in this one. All boards are, have, these are all called the same settings. So you should be fine to find them. Spam nine here and spam nine. I'm just gonna make sure there's no power limits or anything. We've got all our um, like power limits to the max. So we're not gonna be limited at all. Let's go on down here. Make sure that we have speed shift, shift technology disabled, which you do. So we're good to go. We're gonna go back and ring ratio. So I'm gonna start really high. I'll start with five zero. Um, I know this is probably not going to work, but we'll start with this and see if we can actually boot into Windows. Um, the ring clock is also related with memory. So if you want to do extensive memory overclocking later, you may have to lower this value. And sometimes you can have a really high ring ratio and it can be fine and seem stable and you can run games fine and potentially pass uh, stress tests. Sometimes the Windows bootloader can get a bit funky with it. So you might have to bump it down. So that's something I'll mention here. That's worth uh, noting for the future for you guys. Um, and we're going to scroll down and we need to adjust the voltage here because the auto voltage, the boards are going to completely over -volt it or under -volt it. So go down and we'll go to CPU core voltage mode, put it in override or fix mode. If you have something like that and the CPU core voltage, we need to change. So I'm going to start with 1.45, which is the absolute max. I'm, I'm really uncomfortable doing this. I really don't want to go over 1.4, but I'm just going to show you it as an example. We're going to see kind of where we're limits at and then we can sort of slowly back it down. So, you know, if it's not stable, you can bump down the core and the ring clock, and then you can actually bump down the core voltage. Now in Digi All Power, um, all boards look very, very similar, but you need to find something called CPU load line calibration control. And this is where the VDROOP is. So see here, if mode four on these boards, generally on ACES boards, mode seven is a straight line, but mode four is relatively a straight line here, right? So say we were to set this to mode seven, right? We might be doing 1.45 under low, uh, 1.45 under idle, but under load, it might VDROOP all the way down to 1.38 with this load line calibration control, just to let you guys know. So... I'm going to start with mode four. Okay, just a straight line. But if you guys want to, you can do a bit of a V-droop. So higher voltage and then it goes lower under under load. But I know how the CPU behaves. So I'm going to be leaving it on mode four. And I, I generally, when I'm trying to find the limits, I like to just leave it on straight line, just in general as starting out. So we'll go with that and we should be good to go. Another thing I also need to mention that I did mention twice already in this video. It's kind of a big deal. Um, make sure that your water pump is in full speed. So for me right here, my water pump, my Arctic Liquid 3 is a 360 is plugged into system one and have them maxed out. Every board looks a little bit different, but make sure if you have your water pump plugged into the AIO on the motherboard, usually that's full speed automatically. So you're fine there. And like I said before, sometimes you have a core like a NZXT Kraken or a Corsair IQ where you'll need the software to change the water pump into fixed mode. You'll actually need the software always running on the PC and that's just the way it is. So that's something to keep in mind. Also make sure that the fan speeds are ramping up when the CPU temperature ramps up as well. So that's just something to keep in mind. But yeah, we should be good to go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can boot with these settings. So I'm going to press F10 and then enter and we'll see if we actually even post with these settings. I don't think we'll post or if we post, we'll probably get a blue screen instantly, but let's see what happens. What do you know? I've actually got a post and we're in Windows. So um, let's go straight to the Freethe optimization pack and then BIOS optimizations and have a bit of a look at Harbor Info. Now, something I forgot to do is I want you guys to download Cinebench as well because I want us to work with OCCT, Harbor Info and um, Cinebench today. Uh, I really want us to, to do that. So go ahead and download the Windows installer for that. 
All right, hopefully this is stable enough to at least install this program. It might not be. I probably should have done this on this stable no overclock would have been a good idea because if this is unstable, we might do something with a certain load, which is just going to cause this to just crash. But anyway, I've opened hardware info. I'm just going to quickly check right now. Uh, obviously, Edge is Chromium based and it does use a bit of stress, but this is not a proper stress test just using the PC like this. All right, five, three on all cores five on the um ring scrolling down here let's check the v core so yeah it's it's doing 1.45 currently and then we'll have to test it under load to see there might be a tiny little v droop and that that's totally normal but um mode 4 should be pretty much um yeah just like a, a straight line on the msi board so what i'm going to do is i'm going to extract this here hopefully we don't have it we haven't got a blue screen yet i want us to use cinebench to basically just basically get a um, bit of a rough guideline so what we should have done is beforehand we should have um, done a stress test with the stock settings that I had done or was on before so we can see an improvement whether it's better or worse so I'm probably going to go ahead and do that now but just for the lols what we'll do now is we'll make sure that this thing actually runs at all because I have a feeling it's not going to run at all so I'll go to hardware info and I'm just going to copy those there to save myself some time okay and i'll get hardware info up and i i'd imagine if this is stable it's probably just going to run too hot because it's going to be too much voltage i can guarantee you that so open sim bench press accept here and then we don't have to have this in full window just go multi-core press start so i i'm probably going to say even with my cooler and push pull configuration it's going to be too much and instantly we've crashed right so instantly i know this is like a no-go we've found the limits and now it's time for us to start dialing it down we can dial the voltage down with it so my pc you'll either get your pc will completely blue screen or it completely freeze in this case it's completely frozen so i'm going to have to hold the power button down for a few seconds and then turn it back on now if you have issues getting back into bios you might have to clear cmos whether that be taking a bias battery out for a few seconds or shorting two pins on the motherboard check your motherboard manual to do that sometimes if you've had a bit of issues doing that it's not a bad idea to just completely wipe in and clear bios and then start the overclocks again uh, this can happen sometimes so that's something to keep in mind if you've got a decent enough overclocking board there should be a clear sim os button on the very back um whether whether you plug the usb in in the back of the pc um so but yeah i'm gonna have to hold the power button down turn it back on and i'm gonna put it back to where we were at before so we can get a bit of a baseline with sim bench so when we overclock we see that we're getting an improvement um not just testing for stability Okay, I'm back into Windows with just the settings that were on before and if it, if it wants to, if this will help to save time, you should save profiles as you go, um, just so you know what to work with. So I have just like a base profile saved in BIOS that I just loaded to, to save time. So we're back to where we were at and I'm just for the purposes of the video and something you should keep in mind, I'm going to keep hardware info open that may affect results on Synbench, just anything open in general can affect the benchmark um uh so yeah we're, we're going to basically just use this as a benchmark and stress test so i'm going to hit multi-core and start and we'll see um if this actually runs um and what attempts and voltages are set to so um as you can see here if you are kind of if you've done the options that i've mentioned um in the optimization pack video and this is crashing either your cool is not holding up um or it could be unstable overclocks even though we haven't overclocked our CPU. Here's why I've seen a bunch of motherboards. So we're hitting up to about, you know, 70 degrees here, 75 degrees. Um, <clears throat> I have seen, we've got a bit of headroom to work with here, which is good. I've seen some boards uh, just, when you just do XMP, it um, will boost the CPU a little bit, but still won't give the CPU enough voltage. So um that's i've seen that just to let you guys know sometimes bios updates will fix that sometimes not so as an example like v core i've seen some boards try to do this and then give the cpu only 1.1 volts for the same cpu it's a different board that's clearly going to crash in here it's not enough volts of the cpu unless you're really lucky and you got the good silicon lottery which is pretty rare so that's something to keep in mind. So if this happens to you, you might actually want to manually bump up the voltage, even though you're kind of running relatively stock settings apart from XMP. All right, so yeah, this is getting a little bit toasty here, as you guys can see. So I'm going to obviously make sure that my water pump is in full speed. Yeah, I can actually check that here. Yeah, it is in full speed here. It's getting quite hot in this room. Now, 
um now we're going to look at doing uh going back and doing the overclocks so um yeah okay so we were running it in like kind of a, a test mode i believe it might have been selected to this or this so we only really want to run it once and see if we can get through it just at least once this uh stress test or benchmark will kind of get it pretty unrealistically hot compared to games just something to keep in mind so if you do push it quite high even with a good coloring you do get up to 90 it's not really going to do that in some, uh, most of your games so it's just something to keep in mind like i said um every overclock is like a little bit different because here's the thing i can do like 1.4 volts on this thing with 5 2 and 4 8 and in like battlefield and cod it's totally fine even when it monitored temperatures consistently so it's something to keep in mind although to be fair in battlefield 5 when you load one map to another map for some reason it uses avx instructions and it does jump up to 90 but then back down to just a normal temp of like 65 70 degrees 75 max in game which is totally reasonable so that's something to keep in mind but anyway i've got a bit of a rough score with maximum test duration off and you press start we've got a bit rough idea of the score that we have with the current current clocks now now we'll see if we can go back into BIOS and actually find the limits of this thing. Um, and when we find the limits, see if we can loop this at least once. And then we can do some sort of long-term stress to make sure it's okay. And if it's not, we just have to manually adjust the core, manually adjust the voltage and vice versa. That's, that's basically back and forth and back and forth. Uh, that's why kind of AMD is so much easier to deal with because you can just get the CPU, put it in, do XMP, and enable precision boost overdrive, call it a day. It just automatically boosts um to the advertised speed even though intel does do that generally to get the most out of it you kind of want to like force a consistent higher call just for more frames that's kind of how it works with intel but yeah i'm going to take a screenshot of this we'll go back into bios and we'll look at pushing this thing a little bit further okay i'm back in bios um i saved a profile from the test that we did that we completely crashed so i'm just going to load that to save time just to quickly cover remember what we changed there was all call five three fixed mode five zero um and we made sure that a voltage was set as well now honestly i'm not really comfortable going over 1.42 on this cooler and my system so i'm just going to set this to 1.42 max all right and what we'll do is we'll start with probably we could probably start with a call first but to save time like we could just go 4-3 here or auto. That's going to be automatically 4-3. So maybe we can start with the CPU ratio first and then uh, see where the limits are at and then, um, you know, figure out where we're at with the CPU ratio and then raise the ring after that. That's probably the best thing to do. So I'll try 5-3 with just um, auto ring ratio at 1.42 volts and we'll see what happens. So back into Windows, I'll open hardware info. We basically repeat the repeat the process but i'll just check the voltage and make sure it's okay um and then i'll just if we can get at least get just through one um benchmark here which would be great so i'll turn back minimum test duration to off and then we'll start the multi-core here i'm fully expecting to still crash at 5.3 because on um, yeah so i we've just crashed instantly so this is saving us a lot of time so see how we're on even though uh, we're probably going to get a blue screen soon Oh, there it is. It's got a blue screen, but you guys might still be able to see. Four three on the ring. So we know ring's not the issue. The core clock is the issue. Now, if we had an incredible cooler, we might be able to push the voltage more and do five three. But we're kind of at the limits with the cooler that we have and the way that the chip is now. So we're gonna bump it down to five two now. Okay, back into BIOS, go to C and do five two and now i can bump the voltage down a little bit more too so i'll bump it down to 1.4 now just to let you guys know if you have 9900k or under uh you know so like all the years under start with 1.35 5 gigahertz and work your way down with the gigahertz and voltage whereas this chip it's like max 1.3 1.45 volts and 5.3 so starting with that and now i'm working my way down you see kind of where i'm getting at with it now you may work your way down too much on the voltage and you might need to end up upping the voltage but i kind of know how this chip behaves so i think you guys get the point so we'll save and exit all we've changed is the cpu ratio to 5.2 and the core voltage is just down a little tad so save and exit and we'll see if we can run a test Back in Windows again at 5.2 with just the normal ring clock. Um, 
go ahead and we'll start this and see how we go with this now um i don't my my overclocks usually aren't fully yeah it's getting too hot here so that's no good so as far as like avx this overclock and this voltage is definitely a no-go but for gaming it could potentially be okay so that's just something to keep in mind now the voltage under load is another thing that we would want to test as well so I'll, I'll be honest with you guys so this is my daily stable for gaming applications 5.2 and 4.8 on the ring at 1.4 volts with a straight line but as far as like AVX or fully stable applications and this is just to make sure it's fully stable yeah it's too much because it's using AVX instructions as you guys can see it just completely crashed there so it, it's it depends because I don't want to go ahead and tell you guys hey do a non-AVX overclock if you have issues with some games um, you're gonna have to decide for yourself whether you want an AVX fully stable overclock or not something to keep in mind so if you're running this you, you know is another thing you could do and it might not hit up to these temps until a certain point in the stress test as well so something to keep in mind generally i know i'm going to be totally honest with you guys like I, I i'm not using avx it's just a dedicated gaming pc personally like i will push the overclock a little bit further than i probably should and if i can get through games that are incredibly stressful uh, like doing direct x12 games and stuff like call of duty and battlefield temperatures are fine if i get no crashes i kind of just call it a day but um some people like fully avx stable so see how now we're doing like 70 degrees 70 degrees now but if we were to um let this run for the full duration it might actually get up to that and give us an error so that's something to keep in mind so for the purposes of this video let's do a fully kind of stable sin bench overclock um which is not going to be my daily overclock but it's going to be more or less a more stable overclock so um this is probably what i would do more or less for uh, some clients unless they were fine for me to have two different bios profiles for them so what we're going to do here is i'm going to bump it actually down to five one and we're going to go much lower voltage because the voltage is the thing that's that's killing us right now with these temperatures let's go into oc i'm going to change this to five one okay and i'm also going to just to save time we'll i'll up the ring voltage to something reasonable that should be a uh, more than doable and then we're going to lower the voltage so we could either do two things here we could make a massive v droop uh with the current voltage that we have or we could just lower the voltage so in this case we could either go maybe we go 1.35 here um and you know see how we go or we could just do v droop so kind of up to you what you want to do maybe for the purposes of this video i will try a v droop just to see how we go but for some reason this board and this chip seems to prefer like a straight line but um just for the purposes of this video we'll just give this a go all right, so we're in um, back in Windows. We've got 5.1 on the core and 4.5 on the ring. And then vCore voltage is currently, it might be under a little bit of load here, but we did we did do 1.4 with a vDroop. So let's see if the vDroop actually works. Um, I meant to open Synbench, actually. Start the stress test here and we'll see what's dripping down to. So yeah, it's dripping down to 1.277 so that's too much of a v-droop i think it would probably potentially crash on this temperatures are looking okay here but it may potentially be unstable so i'll be more comfortable with a little bit higher voltage because i feel like that's a little bit too further v-droop i mean to be fair i've never tested this cpu on 5.1 like extensively for games so technically speaking i mean it, it might actually be totally fine on that um i'm surprised it hasn't blue screened yet I'll just scroll down here. Another thing I'm going to scroll down and check total errors, WHEA errors, and I've got none. And I'm surprised this is actually getting through. So let's have a bit of a look here. And we'll see the actual benchmark that we get. Okay, so I'm going to Windows key print screen and let's have a bit of a look at screenshots. So I got 16354, the stock settings. And then one six six eight six. So yeah, well, quite a little bit of an improvement there. That's nice. Um, yeah. So what I might do is we might look at pushing this the ring a little bit higher um, for a safe bet. So probably four seven to be safe because if we want to make sure it's kind of probably fully ABX stable, this would probably be four seven max. And I think the V droop is too low though. I uh, personally so I'm gonna adjust that but it's kind of a back and forth guys um, basically and kind of up to you what kind of stress test that you want to do 
like I said personally I'll just play some heavy stressful games and benchmark them as well so you know the last thing you want to do is have a CPU overclock where the benchmarks are worse if the benchmarks are better and you've never had any crashing games you're playing for days and days on end and temperatures are okay well it's cool but this is a little bit unrealistic because this is kind of like a, a rendering test but some people want this uh, fully stable like this uh, and I totally get that so I totally miss BIOS let's go back into BIOS and go straight to OC I'm going to change ring ratio to 4.7 and then load line calibration I believe was like way too droopy so I'm going to try mode 6 or we could obviously just keep it a straight line and manually just like I could just manually adjust the voltage if I wanted to. I might actually just manually, uh, we could, no, I'll probably leave it at that and see how we go. I'm going to leave it on mode six, but we could leave it on mode seven, then manually up the voltage. So say it was doing 1.27 under load, then we could up it. So it would be 1.35 volt under load. So we would up it at 0 0.07 uh, plus on this. So this would be 1.47, I believe. Yeah, but um, you guys, I think you guys get the point. So let's try this and we'll see what happens. All right, guys, we're at 5147 on the ring clock. And idle voltage is at 1.385. Open Simbench again. And we'll go ahead and we'll run the test. See if we can get through this without the temperatures getting too high. If we get any crashes. So under load, it's doing 1.3 volts. So yeah, that seems okay. We can work with that. I would probably leave it on that load lane calibration if we need to manually adjust voltage. I'd bump up the voltage. So we're staying under 90 degrees for this, which is pretty damn good because this is pretty unrealistic and gets things pretty hot. We have hit 91. But we'll see if we can get through this. So we're kind of on the edge a little bit. So we could either lower it, um, lower the voltage a little bit, or we might have to lower the clocks a little bit. So maybe in this case... If we want it to be fully stable, we could lower this to 4.6 um, and then lower the voltage a tiny a little bit more manually. So I might go ahead and do that now. Let's see if we can just make this fully AVX stable. And I guess one thing that you could do if you didn't want to use OCCT, you could stress this for 30 minutes, which would kill your CPU. But I mean, here's the thing. You're never going to be doing that those kind of temperatures in games. But just for the purposes of this video, I want to make what work what we have here like fully stable and fully functional with absolutely no errors so what i would do in this case is i would bump down the voltage a little bit and i'll bump down the ring clock a little bit and while i'm doing that something i should mention there are a bunch of video editing programs that won't use avx that'll just use a graphics card and that's more ideal so then you don't have to worry about two bias profiles so say you want to push your cpu a little bit further to the point where it's not like avx stable for gaming because you get more frames um, and then when you go render, render, it's actually not using the CPU anyway, so you're totally fine. DaVinci Resolve is one of them. That's pretty good. I'm not sure Adobe Premiere uses CPU or graphics card. I'm not 100% sure on that one. I think it might use your graphics card, or you can choose which one it, for it to use. But yeah, you guys get the point. So probably 4.6. And then I'm happy with that kind of a V droop. So I'm just going to manually adjust this to 1.38. And we'll see what we can do. If we could hold under like um 90 degrees where we're not hitting the red just running that and then probably run something like occt for an hour and if we pass like an hour it should be totally totally fine for um you know a bit of avx and and this and that um but personally i'm honestly going to be bumping it back up to the full speed that i have it at that i know it's totally fine for just gaming okay here we are let's do the test five one and four six so Go ahead and we'll run that. Test all the way through. See what temps we're hitting up to. And let's see what the V-Droop... I'm going to imagine the V-Droop would be down to 1.288 under load. So V-Core 1.29 under load. And temps are not hitting 91. They're quite a little bit lower. So we'll see. Maybe like 3 degrees. We'll see what happens when we get through the full test. And we'll see the benchmark out of it. And just wait this through. Okay, we ran it through. Let's check the benchmark. We did hit 91 at one point, but I'm kind of at the point where I wouldn't really want to back it down uh, much more. We could try undervolting it at this point, actually. I might do that, even though this video is getting a little bit long. Um, that's another thing you can do. If you think you might have found like, the limits, you can then um, undervolt it. But let's have a look at the pictures here. And the first score that I got on stock was 16354. 
And then this is one six six eight six. This is one eight five zero. So looks like with like um the lower clocks but more stable, we actually got a higher score here, which is really nice. So that's another thing, you know, um potentially you get higher scores, you want to make sure it's like completely fully stable. So I guess for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to try undervolting the CPU uh, more. So undervolt it by 0.02, just a tiny little bit more. Um, but yeah, see what happens. Now while I'm going to do this through bias, something I should mention, um, I don't at all call myself an advanced overclocker and every overclocker has a different opinion on things i really recommend that um obviously you take this uh, video with a grain of salt and check a whole bunch of other overclocking guides and do your own research and muck around with this with yourself worst case scenario guys if it's not going to be stable things are just going to crash you might corrupt the windows operating system just reinstall windows you can follow my um guide again it's it's no big deal worst case scenario like that's what's going to happen um there are protection limits that are generally going to shut off the CPU if it gets too hot, usually in BIOS, so you should be fine there. But um, yeah, I'm going to look at just undervolting this a little bit more. So let's try 1.36. And then, or we could do the other way around where we could V-drip it more, but no, I think I'm just going to leave it at this. Now here's the thing, like my temps might also be higher because of the memory controller voltages because of my RAM speed. So say you had a lower end kit, like a 3200 megahertz kit, these would probably be on 1.1. You might actually be able to push it further with AVX because it's not going to be running as much voltage to the CPU as well. Something to keep in mind. But yeah, anyway, going back to what I was saying, um, look into it guys. Plenty of tutorials on the internet, lots of guides. You can check that all out. At some point you're going to have to realize, is this a rendering machine? workstation where it needs to be fully AVX stable or am I just a gamer and I can push this CPU a little bit further because it's going to be fine running in games and I get more frames in games that's personally where I'm at with this rig whereas obviously my streaming rig I want it to be fully stable that's really really important but the gaming rig not so much like okay maybe I did push a little bit too high and then I'm gaming for four hours and I do get one crash okay then bump it just down a tiny a little bit over a long period of time and find that sweet spot if you guys know exactly what I'm talking about I think you do. All right, go ahead and run this one more time on the multi-core. Another thing you can do is single core and single core is kind of what favors games. So that's kind of what matters more when it comes to actual gaming. Um, I'm not sure if the single core will run the CPU as hot as well, um, but let's see what we're doing here. So temps actually look not too bad there. And I want to see what the, okay, we're doing 1.274 under load. So, there you go. See if we actually get through this and it doesn't. So you can actually get to the point where you can keep undervolting and undervolting and undervolting. And at some point you're going to blue screen. So you'll need to find that sweet spot and then up the voltage. That's another thing you can do with overclocking. It's not just, a, it's just, it's not just necessarily overclocking the CPU and throwing more voltage into it. It's also, you can do undervolting as well. So um, you can get a little bit of extra performance from undervolting too, but you obviously want to make sure it's completely stable. So look at here, I have um, literally just undervolted it and we've got more performance, 16875. So, I mean, that just goes to show, just as I was saying that, right? So the last one we did was um, with the higher volts, 16850, and this is 16875. So under vaulting it actually gained us a few extra points there, something to keep in mind. Now I could get to the point where I keep undervolting and undervolting, undervolting until I find the blue screen. I might just do that one more time just for the purposes of this video. Um, but then we're going to have to just call it because it's getting a little bit much. Okay, back in a BIOS, going to go to OC. I'm going to undervolt this more. And personally, I've never run such lower clocks, so I actually don't know what this can, thing can do. It This thing can do probably quite a lot lower voltage. Um, honestly, 1.3. Hmm. Maybe I'll go 1.3. Four. I'll try that. See what happens there. See if we get any more points. But yeah, just kind of working with it. Um, but like I said, yeah, I've never really bothered with 5.1. I only really cared about like uh, gaming performance. So, um, you know, if I could loop like a Cinebench, the older Cinebenches and get no stress, um, no crashes in. But that's for me personally. And with this video, I really needed to cover sort of all aspects because, you know, some people might follow this video and actually do use their um, windows for rendering or work applications, which do use AVX. And that's a big deal. That's why Intel is so annoying when it comes to AVX. And 
kind of AMD is a little bit easier because Precision Boost Overdrive, when it gets hot, it just down clocks. So you can kind of have the best of both worlds and it comes out of the box pretty much almost set advertised. So, I mean, but Intel is really fun to play with. This is really, really fun to work with. Honestly, I'm not going to lie. Like getting the most out of your Intel chip is really rewarding and can yield really awesome FPS results by doing this. So um, I personally enjoy this sort of stuff, even though um, I wouldn't call myself incredibly advanced. Um, but, um, you know, I do work with a lot of PCs and, and, and I've seen quite a lot and I've had lots of top end high end PCs and I really enjoy doing this. So hopefully this video is guiding you in the right direction on what to be looking for and what to be doing. Um, and if something's wrong, knowing how to change it or knowing how to fix it, or at least putting you in the right direction to do that. So temps should be lower here. I'm going to imagine the voltage under load would be 1.25. Yeah, there we go. 1.25. Um, I probably wouldn't go, want to go any lower, but uh, we could if we wanted to. I'm going to say, I'm just going to take a while guess here and i'm going to say that like we're kind of at its limits so idle voltage here is 1.33 roughly and then um load voltage is 1.25 so so you guys so you guys know so i think we may have got one extra two extra points here by doing this under volting it more let's have a bit of a look um or do we get less points so uh no we actually got less points so that's a sign of instability by getting less points and we did let the cpu uh cool there is a bit of benchmark variation we did restart the pc and let this pc cool down so if you're getting worse results on that voltage back up again make sure you're kind of getting uh, the same or very very similar results because that's an indication for me that it's probably not stable like if i was to loop this for 10 or 30 minutes it would probably blue screen so i would go ahead back in bios and, and bump that up but Anyway, guys, I hope this video helped you and pointed you in the right direction. I believe I've covered enough to at least get you started. Um, overclocking these are a lot more of a pain in the ass than, um, you know, the 97, 9900Ks, 8700Ks and stuff like that. They're much more easier to overclock. 8700Ks are amazing. You could uh, delete the CPU and do 5 gigahertz at 1.3 volts. Pretty much all of them would do that. It was pretty awesome as long as you've got a good cooler. So I hope to help you guys. Go follow me over on TikTok. I have Instagram. I do stream on Twitch. Go check me out on there, guys. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. And like I mentioned before, I do offer this service over on Twitter if that's something you're interested in. Um, a full once-over service for your PCs. You don't need to worry about anything. You just turn the game on and play and everything's maxed out. Um, yeah, like I hope you found it helpful. Subscribe, like, share around. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.